On October 30, 1963, a C-130 Hercules pulled off the seemingly impossible, landing on the aircraft carrier USS Forrestal. There in the cold waters of the North Atlantic, the Hercules became the heaviest aircraft to ever land on an aircraft carrier. It can be said that the landing of C-130 Hercules on the aircraft carrier is one of the most fascinating moments in aviation history. Let's take a closer look at this fascinating moment and what was the story behind the aircraft legend. In the set of US Navy aircrafts, the category of onboard transport machines, marked in the original as COD, carrier onboard delivery, to some extent lagged behind in the eyes of the public. These machines provided two-way transport of personnel, mail, military transport, or nuclear weapons, if they run out of the ship's warehouse. Thus, such transport planes are a crucial connection between aircraft carriers and mainland bases. The first type of carrier onboard delivery aircraft was the upgraded World War II Avenger torpedo bomber, modified in the early 1950s. This transport version of the Avenger bore the designation TBM-3R and was used primarily to transport up to six passengers with their luggage placed in the bomb bay, designed to store torpedoes. In the later 50s, a transport version of the AD-5 Sky Raider combat aircraft also appeared, again more suitable for transporting passengers than any other capacity. The first, and to some extent more valuable, carrier delivery aircraft can be called the C-1A Trader, developed from the onboard anti-submarine S-2 tracker. The transport C-1A carried up to nine passengers, cargo in the transport cabin in the fuselage, with the total cargo capacity in weight units at 1,500 kilograms. 83 C-1As were produced between 1954 and 1958, the last of which did not expire until 1988. It is also worth noting that the passenger seats were oriented against the direction of flight, so that the passengers could better tolerate the brutal deceleration of the landing plane after being caught behind the brake rope. The seats could also easily be removed, which ensured the variability of the cargo space. The most well-known type of aircraft in the carrier onboard delivery category, which also brought a significant increase in transport capacity, is the C-2A Greyhound. He structurally came out of the onboard early warning aircraft E-2 Hawkeye. The payload of the C-2A Greyhound is 4,536 kilograms, or 10,000 pounds, carrying up to 26 passengers. The passenger seats are, of course, again oriented against the direction of flight, foldable and easily dismantled. Between 1965 and 1968, 17 pieces of C-2A were created, with another 39 pieces of modernized C-2AR between 1985 and 1989. The original C-2As expired in 1987, though the more modern C-2AR are still in use. As in the early 2019, there were 34 pieces in active duty, but in the coming years they will be gradually replaced by CMV-22B Osprey. The list of the heavy aircraft carriers is supplemented by a relatively small US-3A Viking with a transport capacity of up to six passengers and cargo up to a total weight of 2,100 kilograms. It was created by rebuilding the anti-submarine S-3 Viking. The first piece appeared in 1977, another five in the early 80s. The plane was retired in 1998. The most interesting chapter in the history of carrier aircrafts is undoubtedly the tests of the four-engine Lockheed C-130 Hercules which took place in 1963. Hercules became the largest and heaviest aircraft that landed and took off aboard an aircraft carrier. If we look at the onboard transport Grumman C-1A Trader, which has been in service since 1954, we can find many issues despite its importance. A machine in this category would certainly deserve not only greater range, but also greater load capacity and cargo space. In terms of cargo, the C-1A Trader was unable to carry jet engines used to power new high-performance aircraft, we're talking, for example, about General Electric J-79 engines for F-4 Phantom II, an A-5 Vigilante aircraft, or Pratt & Whitney J-57 for A-3 Sky Warrior. Transporting engines from the ship to the mainland due to repairs or more complex service interventions, and transporting functional engines in the opposite direction, has been one of the important tasks of carrier onboard delivery aircraft for some time. In the first half of the 60s, a slightly crazy idea was born to use the four-engine Lockheed C-130 Hercules in the role of carrier onboard delivery aircraft. Tests on the aircraft carrier USS Forrestal have shown that a relatively large and heavy Hercules is capable of taking off and landing on board. 
The aircraft carrier USS Forrestal, which entered service in 1955, was the first aircraft carrier of a modern concept with the so-called angled deck. This part of the flight deck with offset orientation was used to increase the safety of landing aircraft. With conventional aircraft carriers, there was a risk of crashes of landing aircraft into the tower superstructure. However, the angled deck was used for experiments with Hercules, though only at lower takeoff point and landing weights. For takeoffs and landings in a straight line, a specially painted thick dashed white line was painted along the entire length of the deck, on which the pilots tried to position the bow landing gear, serving also as a preventive protection against contact with the tower superstructure. At the beginning of October 1963, a KC-130F aircraft from the Marine Corps was loaned for landing and takeoff tests on board the aircraft carrier. The prefix letter K in the type designation indicates that it was a version of a flying tanker. Necessary but not very extensive modifications of the aircraft for tests on the aircraft carrier included mainly the installation of an advanced anti-slip braking system from a Boeing 727 and the dismantling of subwing spindle bodies with a hose system, hose drum unit, for in-flight refueling. Just before the rehearsals, some jokers sprayed the inscription, Look Ma, No Hook, on the plane at Pax River Naval Air Station. They came across the standard equipment of onboard aircraft with a landing hook, which of course was missing here. In addition to the fact that the pilots of the Hercules had to do without this hook when landing on board, they also had to take off without a steam catapult. The crew of the Hercules consisted of pilot, including Flatley, his co-pilot Stovall, Flight engineers Brennan and Al Sieve, along with test pilot Limmer, were sponsored by the aircraft manufacturer Lockheed. It's worth mentioning that none of the pair of naval pilots had until then experience with piloting four-engine aircraft. The landing and takeoff tests of the Hercules aboard the USS Forrestal took place from October 30th to November 22, 1963. In the first phase, the pilots made 29 touch-and-go landings. In the second phase, it was 21 classic landings and takeoffs. After landing the aircraft, reverse to the takeoff position, changing the angle of the propeller blades to negative values, to obtain a sufficiently long runway for takeoff. Everyone was surprised by the unexpectedly short takeoff and landing, so it was possible to start the takeoff with a small load directly from the place where the machine was stopped after the previous flight. The takeoff weight ranged from 85,000 pounds, approximately 38 tons without payload, to 121,000 pounds, 54.5 tons and because the machine was a flying tanker, the fuel served as a test load. At its highest weight, the aircraft needed a runway of only 745 feet, 227 meters to take off, and it stopped 460 feet, 140 meters on the runway during landing. Although it turned out that the large four-engine C-130 is able to land and take off on board the aircraft carrier, this way of possible operational deployment of the Hercules would be somewhat impractical. It was simply not possible to place the Hercules in the lower deck hangar, also, in case of operating the Hercules from the ground base and staying on board of the aircraft carrier for the shortest possible time could not change its impracticality in a real operation. There could always be a case where the aircraft would have to stay on the ship for a longer time, whether due to weather or technical failure. Moreover, it was impossible to close one's eyes to the fact that such actions with Hercules were to some extent risky, and this would be even more true in normal operational deployment. Everything was finally resolved in the mid-1960s when the Grumman C-2A Greyhound entered service, which managed to transport heavy jet engines.